Hey, this is Annex, and today I'm going to do a little tutorial about how to do sidechain reverb. And this means that it's reverb that's triggered with the MIDI key of like the lead instrument you're playing usually. So this means it gets your reverb to pump uh, instead of just being on all the time. And because it's not on all the time, it's dynamic. And that dynamism is what makes you hear it more and it makes it a lot more emotional and it gives it a lot more movement to your song. So this isn't uh, something that's used at least a lot in trance and probably in hard style too, I'm not sure. Uh, but definitely in trance uh, for lead instruments like a piano. And you want to use like a cleaner instrument like a piano because it doesn't bleed through that way. And by bleed, I mean the, the tail, so the lower decibels, uh, the lower volume parts of your notes after you release the trigger, you want them gone. So those lower volume parts don't inter fear with your reverb. So you either want to hear the instrument or the reverb. So one or the other, at least when referring to your lead parts. And when I say clean, I mean when you play a piano, the note will sound like this. So it's basically an on or off thing. This is compared to like if we do a um, pad, which is not playing. Okay. So that's an example of something that's not clean and that you wouldn't want to do um, sidechain reverb as a lead instrument on uh, because it just has a very yeah, long release uh, and long sustain versus the, another instrument like the piano, which has a, yeah, a short release. So um, what I did here, I'm working in the key of F minor and I did a little arpeggio so an arpeggio is like repeating notes um, at different chord intervals within your scale. And the scale I chose is F minor. And the chord progression I used for my arpeggio was... So it is... One, four, three, and seven. And then with what an arpeggio does is it goes either down or up, like just you're playing the different notes within those different progressions, just in a different order uh, at whatever frequency you want. So I think here I made them yeah, eighth notes or sixteen notes or whatever. Yeah, eighth notes. Okay, so the reason why you hear that resonance here is because when I recorded it, so I recorded this on my piano. Uh, I have like an actual like Roland piano on the other side of the room and it has a MIDI cable that goes all the way to my computer and my setup on this side of the room. So when I played it in, I used the pedal, like I actually had my foot down on the pedal uh, when I was playing this. So that's what makes the sustain. And the reason I'm telling you this is you want to dry out your MIDI clips, your MIDI notes. And because you want to work with as clean a sample as possible, so you make the distinction between the note and the reverb as clear as possible. So the reason why you hear that um, bleeding is because of the sustain pedal. So what I can do to take this off so like this was all the stuff I played in uh, and I just wanted to focus on the last part here. So in the session view of Ableton, if you see where my mouse is, this little purple thing, you go down uh, to the bottom left and you click this envelopes button and this opens up the yeah, envelopes view in session view. And you go to MIDI control and I just want to take off the hold pedal. I guess the hold pedal is the one that was making that sound. So I just want to right click and go clear envelope and it'll get rid of that. So that's what I did to clean the sample and then sometimes you have to just duplicate it to a new track for whatever reason um, and then it works. So instead of something that had a sustain then I get something like this. faster. 
So you hear how that's a lot cleaner. So basically when the MIDI note stops, the sound stops. Okay, so good. We have a nice clean lead instrument, a sample. Uh, another thing you want to check is on the instrument itself that it's actually dry. So when we talk about effects, uh, it can be either dry or wet. And dry is there's no effects on and wet is there's whatever effects on. And you can have a, a proportion of dry to wet, which is mixing the unaffected stream with the affected stream of sound. Uh, so here I'm just, I use this Alicia's Keys VSD because it's really nice. Uh, but I just want to make sure that it's uh, dry. So basically that there's no settings on it because you can add some things like some resonance and reverb and stuff. Um, but I just want as clean a sound as possible. Good. So we check that. Um, and what we're going to do is make these notes a little shorter. So I'm going to copy control A here to select all of these MIDI notes and I'm just going to pull them in. Oh, uh, change my view here. Okay, so we gave them some room to like breathe. So basically with the side chain, uh, yeah, what the compressed reverb is going to do. So you take this note and use it as an input. So you side chain your reverb with this note as a trigger. So whenever this note is being pressed, the reverb is not being played. And whenever this note releases, then the reverb is being played and vice versa. So here, when you have the notes progressing, like the reverb would be off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. <laughs> and it's probably a little too fast of a sample to use this for that. Because whenever you add this type of reverb or any reverb, um, it's there's a potential that it messes up your other effects and your other instruments. So you want to be careful with that. Um, okay, so I slowed it down a little bit. Uh, now, so I added this on my website for you and I just built this from some other YouTube video that had a tutorial on it, um, so you can look up how to build this. Uh, but if you go to my website, you can download this preset. I think I guess it's an instrument rack, not a preset. That's what the ADG is, and the file type of ADG. And you can also add your own VST for reverb. Like sometimes I use the Valhalla reverb in here because it's quite nice, but this is just the Ableton one. So you should be able to work with it that way. And here is just my, yeah, my VST, so my instrument here. So pull that over so you can see it. Okay, so what I have here, so basically we have, uh, we've, we're splitting this track, we're splitting this channel into two different tracks or two different channels. And this is called, um, through an effects chain. And to do this, we use an instrument rack. So this would be like uh, going to, in Ableton, you go to instruments here on the left and you add an instrument rack and you just pull it down. And that's how you get started with making this, but you don't necessarily have to make it. You could just get it from my website or watch the tutorials how to do it. So the gist of it is you have this dry signal. So this dry signal has no effects on it. So it lets this uh, signal come unaffected through and the reverb is what has reverb on it and it also has the compressor on it which tells the reverb whether it's going to be turning on or off and the benefit of doing this so another way you can make reverb in Ableton of course is to just use this uh, return track so on the yeah the basic template for Ableton that comes with it um, Track A in the return is reverb and track B in the return is delay. And you just use these little, uh, yeah, sends to the return tracks to influence how much you have going to that return track. So if we didn't want to side chain, side chain our reverb, we can just send it through with a send. Okay, 
that sounds yeah fine but it's not like breathing it's not really dynamic so i'm going to show you this other way so i'm turning this off um and that's so we don't get any like double double reverb unless we want that because um, if we had the side chain compressed reverb on our track here and then we also send it to the reverb you're going to get like exponential reverb <laughs> so like reverb on your reverb so i wouldn't advise it but it depends what sound you're going for okay so we have the two chains here we're going to focus on the reverb chain so this is what um, is actually creating your reverb effects in here so here we have this reverb uh, this is like adding audio effects and then a, a reverb down here so i think i have a concert hall these are just presets uh, they're not different uh, reverbs they're just different presets of effect so here we have the concert hall reverb uh, and we also have the compressor here so this would be the same as adding an audio effects and then dragging a compressor down so that's just how you build your racks here uh, yeah so with the compressor so you see the audio from it has no input now so that means whenever this plays oh it's off right now oh, it's on So because we don't have any uh, side chain here now, whenever we play this sample, we're going to hear the reverb at 100% on with whatever settings here. So that's like you hear reverb all the time, basically. Um, well, with the respect to the frequencies that it's cutting off here. So with this concert hall preset, you have it cutting off the higher frequencies. So with a knee, but with everything over like, yeah, 33, what is it, 3300 kilohertz. And then you also have some diffusion, but I'm not gonna touch that because this is just a nice setting for your reverb. This means that um, you won't hear those especially high frequencies reverbing. So it also makes it cleaner in a different way. So this is why we have no side chain. So this compressor doesn't matter right now. But when it does start to matter is when we have audio input from our track here. So I'm going to rename this track so it's clearer. So I'm going to name that piano. And then we just select audio from and then this piano here. So basically taking the audio from itself. And then when we do that and we play it, we see this uh, this compression start to give us something. So there starts to be an input on this compression. Um, now what we can do is affect the threshold and that affects um, at which kind of loudness level of that piano input, so of that instrument input, it's gonna start um, compressing or yeah, getting rid of the reverb. So when the threshold is really quiet, this means that basically all loudnesses of this piano instrument, you don't hear any reverb. So this means like the reverb is off. And here we just hear the reverb. So I have soloed this reverb track. That's why you only hear it. And if it's up here, you only hear reverb, so you have no um, compression and release. So you want to find a middle ground. And that middle ground is usually where you have this darker green color in Ableton. And that means it's, yeah, at a nice level. So it's not completely below all your transients, so the, the peaks of your sound that give it that like interesting dynamism and it's not completely off. So just find a middle ground between there. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna take these notes back out again because it sounded a little jarred when we had that side chain reverb on and I'm also going to make all of them 
I'm sorry. <laughs> Make all of their loudnesses the same. Because it was there were some like really sharp points. It didn't sound very good, especially with the reverb. So that sounds a lot more steady and less jarring than we had it before. And then we can also work with this release to create an envelope around that sound, so around that um, yeah, reverb that we're making. And then to see the type of release, so the type of note we want to be creating, I have a little cheat sheet here. So you can go to my website and it's under tutorials and you go under BPM tempo to note length conversion. And then, so now we're playing it, we're playing it a hundred beats per minute. Uh, then you'd go to BPM and you'd see what makes the type of note length that you want to create. Uh, so here, yeah, what we could want like a 16th note or something because we know we're playing in, uh, yeah, 16th notes here. Eighth notes. So we can see, okay, um, 16th note is 150 milliseconds. So see how that sounds or else we could try, um, yeah, 300 milliseconds for an eighth note. Um, you probably wouldn't hear this one very much, the yeah, 30 second notes, but you can try. So I would either, like for this 100 BPM tempo, uh, for the release, in this case, with these note lengths, I would try a release of either yeah, 75 milliseconds, 150 milliseconds, or 300 milliseconds, technically speaking. Okay, so let's try first this 150. Okay, so that sounds like something. Uh, we could also try it a little shorter, so 75 milliseconds, so basically half. And you hear how that's quite a bit sharper. And then if we go to 300 milliseconds, That's also okay. Um, yeah, it just also depends what else you have going on in your song. Um, and if there's a lot of elements, even though 100 beats per minute is quite slow, but if you have a lot of other stuff going on, it can get really messy. So then you'd want a shorter release. And the same the other direction. So if you don't have a lot of stuff going on, you can make a longer release because you have a lot more area. So like a lot more room to breathe. So what I'm doing here, I'm just turning down the dry signal on the piano. So this means like I'm turning down the piano sound and leaving the reverb higher. So this means you're mixing more of the effects with the dry signal basically. So we hear more reverb and less piano with respect to what we heard before. And you can also change this knee. change the ZK time. Good. Yeah, so just play around with it, uh, with the decay time too. You can also think in these, 
yeah, milliseconds, but the decay times can go quite long. So pretty much to see how it sounds to you. Um, yeah, basically for this compressor, I leave the dryer wets all the way on just because I control the reverb with this. Uh, but if you want to make a mix of your reverb being of you just your reverb being compressed and non-compressed, then you would change this dry to wet signal. But you can basically do the same with this threshold. And this ratio here, I mean, it kind of just the same as this dry or wet with respect to your reverb. So yeah, this ratio means that it's going to cut off the reverb all the way. Uh, yeah. Below the threshold. So that's just what it would sound like with the sidechain reverb on. So you kind of get it pumping with the reverb with respect to how your notes are playing. So if I reduce the note length by half, we can hear a lot more space in the reverb. That's a bit staccato, so for an emotional thing, it's probably a little too much staccato, but yeah, you could always um, increase the length between these notes as well, and then you get a lot uh, longer, slower um, area in which you can apply your sidechain reverb. So this would basically be how the final sidechain reverb effect sounds. So you hear it like pumping up and down, and that's because these notes are going on and off, on and off. So we still have this dry piano signal. So that's what we started with. This is the side chain reverb that we added. And this is both together. So yeah, it just makes your uh, lead instruments especially a lot more yeah, emotional and rich and it gives a lot more dynamics to it and that can add a lot more depth to your music production. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you want to learn anything else about this.